Hi, I'm Molly Jones and I'm a ranger here at Fort Zeldin. As you can see, I'm wearing my mask to follow COVID safe practices. My coworker, Alexandra McKinney, is also wearing a mask, staying 10 feet away, helping me record this. Today, however, I'd like to share some fun facts about the creosote bush with you. So to do so, I'm going to remove my mask now. If you're from this region, chances are that you've come across a creosote bush. This evergreen shrub has adapted so well to desert life that some people even plant it in their yards. Most folks will recognize the creosote bush because of the smell. If you take some creosote leaves in your hands and rub them against your palms like this, the organic material that disintegrates creates a strong fragrance that resembles the smell of rain. Having leaves that give off a smell is only one of the many cool things the creosote bush can do. If you look closely, the branches and leaves of the creosote bush all grow facing southeast. The leaves and branch grow in this direction intentionally to maximize the sunlight they get in the morning. As you can see, rain is rare here in the desert, so plants living in this environment must try to get as much rain as possible and try to retain it as long as possible. While many plants grow towards the sun, the creosote bush does this in conjunction with photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is when the plant takes sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water and uses it to make nutrients for the plant to live and grow. Not visible to the naked eye, there are tiny pores that are on the leaves of the creosote bush. These pores allow the plant to get carbon dioxide, but in doing so, the plant loses water. To prevent the loss of water, the creosote bush only opens these pores in the morning when humidity is at its highest. So the amount of water it loses during this process is at its lowest. If you think that's unique, the creosote has the ability to clone itself. This happens when the inner stems of the bush die while the outer ones thrive. In the same way tree rings get bigger, creosote rings get bigger as the outer stems continue to grow. This results with the creosote bush duplicating itself, growing outward approximately three feet every 500 years. This process is called a clone colony, and all the bushes that come from that colony stem from one single root system. As it continues to grow throughout the years, what one bush of a colony may appear to look like random little bushes growing in the same area. Not all creosotes are able to clone themselves, but when they do, it leads them to live a really, really long life. The oldest creosote bush was found in California in 1985. Thanks to carbon dating, scientists determined it is 11,700 years old. The king clone, as they have named it, is one of the oldest organisms on planet Earth. The creosote bush is not only able to thrive in harsh desert environments, but it is widely recognized for its medicinal and healing properties. The leaves and twigs of the creosote bush were grounded up and were used as main ingredients in medicines that could cure colds, fevers, stomach pains, and many other illnesses. The antimicrobial properties of the creosote also allowed it to be used as a skin wash. The twigs were also chewed to alleviate thirst. These same twigs were heated and the sap that came from this were dropped into tooth cavities to treat toothaches. The plant parts of this bush aren't the only things that are useful. This plant is also a host to the lac insect. The lac insect produces and deposits a gum-like material. People harvested this material from the twigs. When heated and then cooled, it produces material that resembles glue and was used as a commercial sealing wax. This material was used to seal food lid jars, mend pottery, make baskets, and sometimes it was even used to keep stone tools and arrow spear points together. Today, the creosote is used as an ingredient in a drugs that preserve massage oils, ointments, and salves. Though the creosote bush is highly respected for its healing properties, it can have some negative side effects that are still being researched. When handling the bush, take caution as many people have unknown allergies that can cause itching and rashes. The creosote bush I am standing by is an amazing desert plant. Today, however, I got inspired by Savor the Southwest blog. So we're gonna show you how to make hanging potpourri from the creosote bush. This is perfect for people that love its earthy desert scent. Many people have an unknown allergy to the creosote bush, which can cause itching and rashes. 
I don't have an allergy, however, but just in the case of it, it's best if you wear long pants, long sleeve shirts, and gloves. The first step is to make sure you have all of your materials. Now, first thing you're gonna need is a blender, some twine, ribbon, or string, a skewer, you can use a toothpick though, applesauce, cinnamon, a mixing utensil, dry creosote leaves, and cookie cutters. The cookie cutters are optional, but they do make it more fun. Next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go look for a creosote bush. Make sure that the creosote bush that you find is on public lands, unless you have permission by an individual property owner. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna make sure you dry your creosote leaves. This took me about two days, but I didn't leave it in a place where the sun was hitting them. If you go ahead and leave them out in the sun, it may speed up this step. After your creosote leaves have dried, you're going to want to remove the leaves from the branch. Now that you have your dry creosote leaves removed from the branch, it's time to put it in the blender. It's okay if you go ahead and leave some of the twigs into the mix. Now, I used three quarters of a cup. So once you put it in the blender, you're going to blend until it turns into a leaf powder. Before you remove the lid of the blender, be very careful and open it very slowly because the leaf powder will rise up and it can cause you to cough. So now you're gonna use your mixing bowl and put the leaf powder in here. Next, you're gonna go ahead and take your applesauce and mix it into the bowl. I used four tablespoons. Now that you have the applesauce and creosote mixed in, you're gonna go ahead and take some cinnamon. I used about four teaspoons. Next, you're going to mix. Now, this mixture should resemble mud. If it's still too watery, don't worry. You can always just use more cinnamon or nutmeg. You're gonna have to use your hands and get a little dirty, but that's okay. Next, you're going to take about this much to make a walnut sized ball, like this. You can leave them in this shape, but if you have cookie cutters, you can go ahead and pat those down to form thick disc like this. Then you can take your cookie cutters and use them to cut out shapes. Once you are finished with your shapes, take to the toothpick and carefully poke into the center, making a hole that goes all the way through like this. Then insert your ribbon, twine, or string to make a hanger. Once this is done, let them sit and dry for three to seven days. Otherwise, they'll fall apart on you. After drying, your hanging potpourri should be hardened and looks to have the consistency of the one I am holding here. Hang these up in your closet, laundry room, living room, or even car and enjoy the smell of the desert. Please don't forget to share your photos with us. The creosote bush is an amazing plant with an extremely long life and has been very important in medicines and been used throughout history. So next time you find yourself out in the Chihuahuan Desert, don't forget to smell the creosote.